Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spohr here today for the Stamp Market and I'm so super excited to be sharing new products, part of the Black Friday 2019 event, including this mailbox gift card holder, Merry Mail Stamps and Coordinating Dies, and awesome stitched tags and stitched alphabet that works with the tags to create these awesome custom gift tags. If you know me, you know I'm all about fun, handmade, gift-giving type of uh, projects. I love gift card holders and package tags. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to die cut the elements and we're going to start with these super cute mailbox gift card holders. I have die cut the gift card holder, holder two times from Cherry Kisses, the Stamp Market cardstock. From one of the sides, we're going to cut out the mail slot. So that is a step separate die that you can then use to die cut the mail slot. Then before we assemble the mailbox, I decided I wanted to add some decoration to the sides of the mailbox to give it some texture. And the stamp market has some awesome background stamps. I am choosing to use the crisscross background stamp today. It's going to be really subtle but super pretty. So on my Cherry Kisses and Leafy mailbox, we'll be using the Stamp Market Black Waterproof Premium Dye Ink, and it stamps beautifully. We are going to stamp both the front and the back. And I'm going to take you from start to finish with the Cherry Kisses mailbox first. All of the mailbox are assembled exactly the same, but I assembled one all the way first just to get a feel for it, and by doing that, I also came up with some little tips and tricks that I want to share with you. Again, while our mailbox is flat, I want to decorate the front of the mailbox with some awesome sentiments from the Merry Mail stamp set. So this is made to coordinate perfectly with the mailbox gift card holder, I'm going to use Holiday Mail and then Express Post for the front of this mailbox. And we are going to stamp and emboss this in white on the mailbox so it really pops. So against the red with the black kind of little crisscross plaid background, we're going to have a gorgeous white sentiment. This one is a pretty traditional uh, mailbox. You could definitely go a little more bright and colorful. If you guys have been following me for a while, um, I tend to, I decorate a lot in red and white. Um, and so I also have a lot of red and white decorations. I tend to gravitate towards really traditional um, simply because I am gift wrapping and matching kind of my decorations in my tree. But you can do these in any color that works for you. And I am especially partial to like the rainbow kind of design because I think it's so, or rainbow colors, because the Stamp Market has the Color Crush collection and it is so bright and so colorful and just really gorgeous. Now I'm gonna tell you straight up, you can see my embossing powder is not great. I struggled with it here and that is only because I did not press hard enough. So I contemplated what to do. And ultimately, I opted to just go ahead and heat set that as is, which it looks terrible. And then I'm going to put it back in my Misty. I did not remove my stamps. I am a big proponent at, to not remove your stamps from your stamp positioner until you are happy with your project. Because I can't tell you how many times I've had to go back and fix something. And this is a prime example of that. So I simply stamped that again. Added my embossing powder. I haven't even heat set that yet. And you can tell already that it's sticking so much better. So I'm simply going to heat set this then and my sentiment is all fixed. I did not ruin the front of my mailbox. I didn't have to create another one, which always makes me super happy. And I love, love, love the white on this red and black. Now from the back side of the mailbox, we can go ahead and remove that little flap. We don't need it from this one side. And it's very easy to just remove that with your scissors. If you have done any embossing and you used a powder tool, make sure you buff that away when your embossing powder is cool. Then I'm going to fold in the side and the bottom flap on the front 
and the side flap on the back. Those are going to be the pieces that kind of hold in our gift card holder little pull tab. On that pull tab, I am going to stamp the word pull. This is also from the Mary Mail stamp set and I'm going to stamp this with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder to match the rest of my design. This is really ingenious. I love how these pieces fit together and I think you guys are going to love this too because it just hides the gift card and it's just so stinking cute. But there are definitely some tricks that I found because I wasn't a big fan of my insert wobbling around. I just didn't use enough adhesive to start with. And so I want to show you that on camera so that hopefully when you get yours at home, you don't have the same issue that I did. Now with the pull tab, that needs to be folded forward. These are going to catch together and that's what's going to hold that little flap inside. It can come out. It, it does, I mean, when the recipient pulls it, they can pull it all the way, but it is made to catch so that it doesn't come all the way out. Also from the Merry Mail stamp set, and I know I didn't realize it was so low on my screen, so I apologize. I am stamping the Holly and the Berries using Cherry Kisses and Leafy, the Stamp Market inks on smooth white cardstock, and die cutting these with the coordinating Merry Mail dies. I'm going to do this for all three mailboxes. We're going to stamp Holly and Berry that's going to decorate kind of the top part of the mailbox, and then in addition to those pieces, in the mailbox gift card holder set, there is a rectangle and then a little triangle that can be used together to create an envelope. And that's what I'm fiddling with. Again, I'm so sorry I was zoomed in so close, you guys. I don't know what happened here. Maybe in the prep for Thanksgiving, I completely just did not pay attention to what I was doing. I don't know. So I stamped a heart from the Merry Mail stamp set on the flap of that envelope and to, just to add some decoration. When we get to the other two mailboxes, I'm going to add even more to that envelope, so I'll show you that here in a bit. Now I'm using some wider double-sided tape on the flaps on both sides of the mailbox, and I suppose you could just adhere the two sides together like that, however, I don't recommend it. Um, I'm going to show you, I did take the backing paper off, I put my two sides together, and then I'm going to put my insert in. And I just felt like it wiggles around and it does come out really, really easy. And I thought there has to be a better way to ensure that it's not going to flop around. And so what you do is, you. I'm gonna, just going to show you this because it definitely is easier to show you before I add all of the adhesive. You pop that inside. You're just going to slide in the gift card insert, slide it up, and then when, it, you pull, when the recipient pulls it out, that little catch is supposed to catch it. So you put it in and you pull down and it catches. Those two little tabs that fold catch on one another. However, see how open this is? I really felt like it's just too open. So I used some undo and kind of opened up one side. And then I'm going to take some skinnier double-sided adhesive. And we're going to take that up the sides. Now I will get a little bit smarter here as I go along. Let's take our pull tab insert and really see how close we can get because I can get a little closer. You don't want the adhesive right next to it, but I want to create kind of a channel so that it just is tighter and that way I don't have to worry so much about it coming apart. So along each side of the pull tab, while the mailbox is open, I've got two sides. We're going to go along the top, and that's going to secure it really nice. You're still going to have plenty of room for your gift card. I will we'll show you adding a gift card inside so you can see just how cute and just how well this works. Um, but definitely do that. I went ahead and adhered my gift card or my, my sliding mechanism after I assembled this. But I would really, on the second two mailboxes, I went ahead and left it in place, removed the backing paper, and shut my mailbox. And I found that worked even easier. Um, just really makes this whole little mechanism super secure. So you can see I'm just kind of trying to pop it open, slide that little slider into place. Definitely the first one was a learning curve, and I left it in because I think it's important to kind of show the process 
um, especially if there's not, you know, detailed instructions right off the bat. So my hope is that when you guys get this at home, you have an easy time putting that together. But look, it catches. I am not worried at all about that piece coming out. Now, the mailbox slot is made to perfectly work with this little mailbox, and there's also some stamped images from Merry Mail, so you can kind of choose to use what you want there. Um, a gift package or a letter, you could stamp and color if you wanted to and add that. I've assembled then my envelope. I'm gonna pop it and glue it just to the inside of that, and I'm gonna glue my holly and berries to the outside. I'm pretty aware of where my glue is because we don't want it to glue to that inside pull tab piece, but I had no trouble by just putting a little glue on the front of the envelope, just that tiny corner and tucking it inside. At no time did it even kind of stick to that pull tab. And then you can see how well that pulls out. Let's grab a gift card and I will show you how I assembled that. So I like to use, oh, and I did put glossy accents, pardon me really quick, on the holly and the berries and the heart. And that's gonna give them a little glossy raised finish, just a little something. Now the gift card, I like to put some like glue dots on the back so it's secure. I'm gonna pop it in place right on there and then tuck it inside. And look how cute that is, isn't that so much fun? I am in love with this, I love shaped cards, I know you guys do too, and makes it even more fun that this one can hold a gift card. However, I do wanna tell you, if you wanna use this simply as an interactive card design, imagine, you know, it still can say pull, pulling it out and revealing a cute little message inside or whatever. Just so much fun. I absolutely adore these and think they're just really stinking clever. So I decided to do these in a couple other colors and also use some other sentiments from the Merry Mail stamp set for my additional mailbox gift card holder cards. So this is gonna be some leafy card stock and this one's very similar to the first one, just we're gonna use uh, the black waterproof dye ink from the stamp market on the leafy card stock. We're going to stamp and emboss the Christmas message across the front with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. And all of the set things are the same. It's just the color basically that's different. For the blush color mailbox, I opted because I didn't think that white embossing would show up probably quite as well on this one. I'm gonna use red for the crisscross and we're gonna use red for the text stamping and black ink. So we'll use some black ink there and some red ink there, and I like how that turned out really well. Another fun idea is take a background stamp from the stamp market and do tone on tone. So take the blush ink and stamp on the blush cardstock. Take the Cherry Kisses ink and stamp on the Cherry Kisses cardstock. I love tone on tone, and that's always a fun option as well. So once I had this down, I assembly line styled it. We're gonna cut those tabs off the back panel of the mailbox, remember from the first one. So the side that doesn't have the little mail slot in it, we're gonna cut that tab off, and then we can simply put these together. And if you have a bunch of gift cards that you give at the holidays, wouldn't this be fun? I am especially thinking this is gonna be a great little way to add just a little something um, to leave in my mailbox for my mail carrier. I mean, obviously this will work for anyone, teachers and kids and friends, I mean, whoever, it doesn't matter. But I especially love this for, I always like to have a little thank you because my mail carrier tends to have to bring me a lot since I work from home and I have a lot of stuff coming and going all the time. And I like to always just leave a little something to say thank you. And I think this is a great presentation for a mail carrier. I used Christmas delivery and then please handle with care for the front of the leafy mailbox. And I really am loving the green mailbox as well. Um, I love all of them and just kind of for different reasons, but all for the reason that the gift, the mailbox gift card holder is cute. Um, the white embossing does show up super great on the green cardstock. 
The crisscross background, one of the reasons I chose it over some of the other backgrounds, really subtle. And I knew that I wanted something subtle so that the sentiment and the design would definitely take center stage. And it allows that. If I wanted to use more of like the plaid, I think, or the polka dot, I would go tone on tone. And there's some other backgrounds as well, but those are just two off the top of my head that I think would be cute. Uh, I would do a tone on tone. So I would do blush on blush or cherry kisses on cherry kisses or leafy on leafy or any of the other colors. Um, if you tend to gravitate towards maybe more modern and you want to do some of the aquas and, and limey greens and things, I think that would be fun as well. I stamped Sending Merry Mail on this one with the Cherry Kisses ink, and then I am stamping North Pole above that with the black ink. Let's assemble our gift boxes. So I want to just show this again where you fold in these tabs on the front and the back. The tab for the pull tab, remember to fold that forward. Put I like to use the, the wider tape on the tabs. And this time, I'm only going to remove the backing paper from one of the tabs. And then put these two pieces together. And that's going to kind of just make one long mailbox piece. And I didn't get it lined up very well. I should have used the Misty. I'm going to show you that tip when we get to the tags. Then I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to take thinner double-sided tape. And we're going to run that along the two sides of the pull tab. And then we're going to put some up above, and that's going to create a channel that helps keep our pull tab or our gift card holder pull tab in place and not shift all around or fall apart. Once we have that, I am going to pull all my backing paper off. And this is where I was saying I kind of got smarter. I decided to go ahead, instead of trying to insert this later, I'm going to line it up now. And I'm going to shut my mailbox, press it really good. You can always take a bone folder and make sure that it's adhered well. And then I'll test out my pull tab and look at that. Works perfectly. So, so excited. Yay. And it's ready for embellishing. So I have assembled my final two mailboxes, and I'm ready to add the rest of the detail. And the details are exactly like the first one, just different colors. So for our blush-colored mailbox, we're going to use a leafy envelope. And I looked through my Stamp Market stamp sets to find, I knew there were some small, small backgrounds, and the Made With Love stamp set from, I believe, a couple years ago has polka dots and stripes. They're made for tags. I love them, and they are perfectly sized to decorate our envelopes. So I'm not going to decorate the flap with the background stamp image, but I am going to decorate the rectangle part of the envelope with some... Um, a background design. So for the green one, it's going to be leafy ink. So we're going to do some leafy polka dots on a leafy background. And I stamped tone on tone leafy ink on the leafy cardstock. Look at those polka dots. How cute is that? And then for the flap of the envelope, which is that separate piece that gives it dimension. I stamped the heart again, but this time I stamped it with clear embossing ink and heat embossed with white embossing powder so that it would stand out against that green envelope. We'll assemble the envelope and then tuck that inside of our mailbox. I wanted contrasting colors of envelopes for each of the mailboxes so that it really stood out. Then we will adorn the corner with our holly and berries. And I stamped and embossed the diagonal stripe from the Made With Love stamp set on the other envelope, that Cherry Kisses envelope. Next, we have our alphabet stitched tags. This is just a quick little bonus for the rest of this video. If you guys wanna see more in depth of these kind of projects, um, with the alphabet stitch dies, please leave me a comment down below and let me know. I have an idea that I'm kind of kicking around and I'm a little excited about. So if you want to see more of that, 
please do let me know. I knew this video was going to get kind of long, so I am going to kind of speed through the stitching process. And if you want more detail on that, please, please let me know. Now, I wanted to keep these really similar to the mailbox. So again, I'm going to use the crisscross background to decorate my tag. This is the new stitched tag die. I took the alphabet, you can choose any of the letters that come with that, and die cut that from the front of the tag. I also have a back of the tag. I am not going to add the cross stitch to that, and or the crisscross, pardon me, to that. Um, and I'll show you why here in a minute. And then I am simply stitching, cross stitching this design on my tag. I'm going to tell you to I was a cross stitcher a long time ago. I still very, very rarely, but I still do have some, you know, projects that I will sit and work on every once in a great while. I love it. I just don't take the time to do it, I guess. But I cut way too long a piece of thread. This I'm using all six strands as well because I want it to be nice and bold. Um, and I know better than that. When you get long strands like this, they tangle. And it literally tangled like pretty much the entire letter for this first one. And I had enough that I got all the way to my second tag to the very bottom row before I ran out. So that's how I know I had way too much. Um, when it starts tangling and knotting up every time you're going up and down, um, you've probably cut too long of a strand. Start with a shorter one. It's not a big deal if you have to, you know, um, go ahead and run that through the backs, back stitching on the back um, when you get close to the end and cut another length and pick up where you left off. No one will ever know. I like to put, the reason I've cut another tag is to back this one so you won't see the messy stitching on the back of this. So just a couple of little tips for you. Again, I do want to reiterate, if you do want to see a more in-depth video on how to stitch this, probably in real time, it's going to be a little bit long, um, let me know because I definitely will do that. It just wasn't really conducive to the time limits today and I didn't want to have you here too long. On the tag backer, I am going to take to and from from the Merry Mail stamp set. And I have to say, I have to and from in lots of stamp sets from lots of different companies that are usually kind of small. I really am digging the size of this and the scripty font. Love it. Totally fills the back of that tag. I mean, you still have plenty of room to write the recipient's name, but I really love that. Then I put adhesive. And I you on the back of one of the tags, and I used my mis misty to line those up and glue them back to back. There's hole reinforcers in the stitched tag set. I'm going to use that little. I die cut mine from black cardstock. I put it on the front and the back, so it looks as pretty from the front as it does on the back. And look at that fun little stitch tag. Isn't that adorable? I absolutely love these. I'm going to run some red and white Baker's twine through mine. I've also die cut additional, or stamped and die cut additional holly and berries that I'm going to use to adorn the front of my tag. I kind of wanted it all to be a matching set today. You can choose to do that or not. You could add something else if you wanted to. Um, you can do these in any color. I do like that little bit of subtle stamping in the background because I think it really adds to the design. But I love this. Look how bold these are. I'm a huge fan of monogram gift tags. You can bet that we I'm going to have a ton of these underneath my tree this year because I really love those. Here's that tip again of putting adhesive on the back of one tag, putting it in the bottom corner of your misty, lining it up with the other side, and then putting them back to back. You're going to line them up perfectly if you do it that way. I'm going to just finish off the second tag with my whole reinforcers, my red and white baker's twine. I did opt to use red and white for this green tag because I think it ties in nice to the holly and the berries. And that is going to finish it up. I just want to thank you guys so much for joining me today for this special release for Black Friday from the Stamp Market featuring so many good things. The mailbox gift card holder die, uh, the stitch dies, the stitched alphabet dies, and the Merry Mail stamps and coordinating dies. The supplies I used to create my projects are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube.
Here are a couple more videos featuring the stamp market stamps and dies that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a brand new card making or paper crafting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Happy holidays and I will catch you next time.